Hello, this is part 48 of our comparative Bible study on the beginning of Jesus Galilean ministry. During this part, we would like to review or better clarify some of the points made during the previous three Bible studies concerning the meek and poor in spirit. Overall, this is our 88th New Testament Bible study. Just to provide a brief outline, there are four main points that we would like to touch on during this Bible study. First, poor in spirit. Second, meekness. Third, meekness plus something else, apparently along the lines of lowliness or self-constraint. Fourth, what I meant by the signpost phrase that I've used in the last couple of Bible studies. Let's get started. Concerning Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, I've been baffled by and considering off and on for about the last 10 years what this phrase poor in spirit means. Could it be speaking of people who are poor literally, as I believe I've heard it commented? Or is it talking about people who are poor spiritually and not literally, as I believe I've read in some commentaries? Or is it talking about somebody being deficient in the spirit? And which spirit is being talked about? Is it the Holy Spirit, some other spirit, or our spirit? In New Testament Bible Study 85, I propose that if this phrase, poor in spirit, is speaking of our spirit, could these verses in the Old Testament with respect to spirit apply? For example, saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Again, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Again, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. The underlying Hebrew word for contrite here in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2 appears from Strong's Hebrew Dictionary to also mean maimed, lame, dejected. This underlying Hebrew word for contrite here in Psalm 34 appears to indicate being crushed, literally to powder or figuratively. Do these words like crushed, dejected, broken, humble, in spirit appear to be similar to poor in spirit here in the Sermon on the Mount. Considering that that could be the case, I've proposed that, could this verse, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, have to do with humbling or casting down our personal spirit? Saving that thought, let's move on to the second point. Among other things, in New Testament Bible Study 86, we discussed how these words highlighted in black and dark gray here, which underlying Greek and Hebrew words appear to be closely related, could be translated as meek or humble or other words. As usual, there can be variations in translation among different Bible versions. In fact, Young's literal translation the ESV, NIV, and New Living Translation all translate this word I've highlighted in black here in Isaiah 66 2 as humble. So maybe we can look at meekness and humbleness interchangeably for the rest of this Bible study. Keeping this in mind, let's move on to the third point. Where I am now, it seems to me that there's a reoccurring theme of meekness or being humble plus something lowly or some type of self-constraint or something along those lines. Here in Isaiah 66 too, that second thing is a contrite spirit. This meekness plus something else appears to be in the New Testament as well. For example, in the Gospel of Matthew, the Lord Jesus stated that he was meek and lowly in heart. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians besought by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. In Ephesians 4.2, it lists meekness and lowliness both. In 1 Peter, it states meek and quiet spirit. And once again, here in the Sermon on the Mount, we have 
meek in close proximity to poor in spirit. Furthermore, and this might be reaching, the last two fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5 are meekness and temperance. Could these be examples of meekness or humbleness plus lowliness or self-restraint or something along those lines? Another possible example, as I've offered in the last couple of Bible studies from the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13, charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up. Could it be that not being puffed up is akin to being humble or meek the way that we view ourselves, and vaunting not itself is kind of a form of being lowly or restraining ourselves? Is there a pattern here? Could we use this pattern to help us better understand what the phrase poor in spirit may mean. What did the Lord Jesus mean by this phrase? Also factoring into this, I'm still trying to get my mind around what our spirit might be. Especially in the Old Testament, the word that's translated as spirit is sometimes translated as wind or breath. Again, this might be a reach, and I'm not saying this dogmatically, but could poor in spirit have something to do with being poor in breath or wind, maybe akin to not vaunting ourself, not boasting? Maybe like a quiet spirit. I don't know. This possible pattern of meekness or humbleness, how we view ourselves plus something else maybe that has to do with lowliness and self-restraint just seems to be something that's maybe been popping up here again i don't say this emphatically i just wanted to offer it for your consideration in case you see the same thing let's move on to the last point the fourth point during the last couple of bible studies i've used the phrase signpost and I may not have been using that phrase the way that other people use it. Maybe I could have used the word signal instead. To illustrate the point that I was trying to get across, I'd like to use an example outside of our current Bible study. When the Lord Jesus was crucified, he said a statement that could be interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This same type of language appears to be towards the beginning of the 22nd Psalm. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? When I read the 22nd Psalm, there appears to be a lot of language that makes me think of the crucifixion, which I've highlighted in green here. Especially, they pierced my hands and my feet. And then later on, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. This appears to be quoted in Matthew 27, 35 as being a fulfillment of a prophecy. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them and upon my vesture, did they cast lots? In addition to the immense pain that the Lord Jesus was under as he was being crucified, could making this statement have been a signal or maybe a signpost to say it a different way to us to go look at the 22nd Psalm to learn more about what was going on with the crucifixion? At least that's a possible way that I thought I could explain it. So in the last Bible study, I tried to suggest that maybe the Lord Jesus talking about the meek inheriting the earth, that that may have been a signal to look at Psalm 37. The meek shall inherit the earth. I tried to highlight references to inheriting the land or the earth or things to that effect here in light blue. Maybe we can get more information about the meek inheriting the earth here in Psalm 37. I just wanted to offer this as a possibility. Not to mention, I thought that Psalm 37 had a lot of encouragement in it, like the Beatitudes. Let's stop here for now. Lord willing, maybe we'll have another Bible study in the future. If I got to share anything good, it's a blessing from God. Goodbye.